In this lab, we're looking at alternative methods to measuring discharge in the field. We uh, did the full method at Pigeon River and Nogis Creek where we went to the stream, measured it, divided it into panels, calculated the area of each panel, and then measured the velocity in each one. So we have a very thorough discharge reading there. And that's good um, to do every once in a while because as you know, the stream character will change over time due to winter um, ice conditions and also flow conditions during the summer. So that is done occasionally, but usually in the meantime just the um, stage will be measured. And there's other ways of measuring discharge too if you just want to do something quick and dirty. So the first method that is a temporary one is using a weir. And this is an example of a V-notch weir. You can see the V in the shape. And you can either go in and measure the velocity as the water is coming through and measure the height of the water at the center of the V and then from that you can calculate the area and velocity and work out your discharge but what is more commonly done is someone just grabs a bucket and you measure the volume of the bucket place the bucket at, on below the discharge spot and time it and see how long it takes to fill the bucket up and for example if you had a bucket that's holding five liters and it fills in ten seconds then we know we're getting two and a half liters a second so there's our discharge two and, a half, and then we can work that out into cubic meters and so this is a good temporary one if you just want a rough estimate uh, it's done in the field usually you just take a sheet of plywood here they've used something else a little different and you get a handsaw and just cut the V, pound the stakes in, leave it for a while and sometimes that same day you'll pull it out. You'll notice that this one is a uh, one that they're using frequently because they also have a rectangular weir and they've decided to use the V notch in this location, probably fits better. And the rectangular one would be easier for calculating the area but if you're doing it at the computer it doesn't really matter. In. So Leave here's just another while. example where you can actually see the bottom of the, bottom of the weirs. Uh, You'll notice that this one is one the water flowing over one that they're using and frequently because they also the have a rectangular weir and they see how we decided measure the to use the center of the location. The probably fits sorry, better. That height in the center of and the, the rectangular one would be easier This example or this area, picture rather is taken from the Handbook of Environmental Technology by, sorry, Basic Environmental Technology by Nathanson, the one I always call the Bible. So if you ever see it, uh, for a good price, pick it up. Because how we measure the covers everything we do in this course. Height in the, sorry, the I put this the example in just as a, um, to show this example, how sometimes this picture rather is taken is from permanent the Handbook of Environmental Technology. And I liked this one by, because, uh, as you sorry, can see, basic the environmental technology by Nathanson. Uh, a little, little bit of a story to this Bible. one. One so year we had a field school, and unfortunately, we couldn't go up north because the lake hadn't cleared of ice yet so we had to have field school down here. Don't worry I think with climate change uh, it won't be a problem in the future which is rather unfortunate but good news is we get to go to Bark Lake. Uh, so we had field school at Lin in Lindsay and you've seen Rick Mercer can show that it can be a good time and uh, what we did one day was we sent everybody out to collect discharge from storm sewers after a rain and we the students came back with some really interesting results and we didn't expect it at all. Um, some of them were coming back with raw sewage that was coming out of these storm sewers. So what it meant was that homes in the area were plumbed, in other words they had pipes leading from their toilets to the storm sewers and everything was getting flushed straight into the skugog. I know that makes you just want to go and rush and grab a drink. The city has become aware of it and what they're doing is conducting dye tests to see who is properly connected and who isn't. Now this could have been just a bad job done by a plumber, someone to cut corners, who knows, but the fact is that we now have some problems. So the inspectors would go put dye in the toilet or the shower or the bathtub and wait to see where it comes out and if it does come out in the storm sewer they would have an appropriate color in each home and they could figure out where the effluent was coming from and order those people to have everything fixed. It's also This, this test is also conducted in industry. Um, when I was an abatement officer uh, the city of Scarborough would go to industries and pour dye down their, their uh, sinks and 
discharge areas to see if anything came out of the storm sewer. A lot of them were old buildings, and for old for Scarborough it would probably be like 80 to 100 years old, and again, they weren't connected properly to the sanitary sewer, so stuff was coming out at the storm. And it was interesting because whenever I went to a spill, I'd always be there with someone from the city of Scarborough, and he'd look at the color of the stuff coming out, and he'd know exactly which company it was that had had the spill, and we would go there, and sure enough, they, they would be the ones that had the problem, we'd go fix it up. So, as you can see, the weirs have a use. Um, Another point I wanted to make was that when the dye tests are being conducted, uh, it's usually the city that does it, and they will let the Spills Action Center at the Ministry of the Environment, Spills Action Center um, nickname is SAC, S-A-C, and SAC knows so that if anyone calls in, let's say someone's been walking their dog by the river, sees that the river is bright pink or bright orange, whatever color they've used, and by the way, this dye is biodegradable, um, Speak the people that at SAC can say, yes, we know about it, thank you very much. It's a test being done by the municipality, it's non-toxic, non-hazardous, and this is why it's being done. So it's good because it's good for public relations, people know about it, know why it's being done, and the person can also feel good that they have called it in and they know the result. They don't have to think at night thinking, oh geez, maybe I should have called somebody and let someone know. Because uh, I have had uh, incidences where it has come out bright green, the municipality hasn't been doing tests and it turned out that it was antifreeze from a local garage that had been dumped. So you just never know. You can also feel good that they have Here's called a, it another example of they discharge that's the result. being measured. They don't have and this to think one is a oh, maybe full-time permanent let someone know. Um, because uh, I have had a piece of uh, equipment that's being used has to come measure. Out bright green. This one is called a partial flume, and it turned out and as that you it was can see, you can buy it from a local garage that been dumped, and you just install so it into the ground. Know. And here they have a meter that's recording the height of the water as it's going through, and you'll notice that they have the paper roll. So here they are actually using the old Stevenson's recorder. Other places may have something more modern that will be measuring the stream height, but they all work. So again, we measure the height, we calculate the area, and then we can determine the discharge. This is used very frequently in industry because a lot of them will be required to know their discharge so they can calculate their loading limits and determine if they're in compliance with Ministry of the Environment regulations. In the stream height. And here's but a cross section of the flume they showing all work. how water is so again, channeled in. We measure the height. They make it narrow to the make area. A flow and then we can determine the discharge. discharge flow. You want to be able to this is used get a measurement very frequently. And they also has a lot of grade required down to so know the their discharge will increase so they can calculate their loading so limits and they get determine if they're in compliance with Ministry of the Environment regulations. This I Showed in lecture, this is a cross the section station of the flume showing how also water measures is stream height. channeled in. Usually, they before make it stream narrow gauge to make is installed, flow come through because if it is pretty slow, you want to be able to profile get a measurement. So again, what we did at Pigeon and they Nobis, also have we would do a grade coming down, so determine everything, and then over the period of time, so again, they, they would get measure the some stream height. And ones in the city of Kawartha Lakes send the information remotely to this to the to the conservation area, so they can record all the information. A complete and profile is done as well. And what we did at Snowflakes, which we would see here, determine everything, and then over the period what's of done time, is, they would measure the stream what's done height with this information and is it is one quarter. And historically, historically lakes, over time, send the information they will get remotely the to appropriate discharge to the, to the, the conservation of the stream, area, so and they from can that data, record they can all the information. Plot a curve, and as you can see, it's discharge against stage, and after a while. They don't need to collect the discharge anymore, they just need to collect the height. So if they know that the height is at, at this point on the graph, they just have to move it across, see where it hits the line of best fit, and project down, and that will determine what the discharge is. And again, this is based on numbers, it's based on historical data. So if pa um, climate patterns are changing, the discharge may change with the height because the character of the stream may change, so they would have to go back and do another stream profile to get a feel for it. Full stream profiles, like what we did at Pigeon and Nogis, are usually done about every five to seven years. This is a, an example problem for the discharge assignment. Here we have a culvert, a cement one, 
that is rectangular in shape. The bottom is cement, uh, it's down in Scarberia, and it's one and a half meters wide. The heights have been measured at different times, and each time the height or stage of the stream was measured, the velocity was measured as well. So we have some historical data, and what we're going to do is plot it on a ratings curve, and from that we can determine the discharge at any stage level. So the question is we're being asked to determine the discharge from the graph when the stage is 0.6 meters high. So first of all we have to get our discharge. The formula for discharge is velocity times area. And our area is our height times our width. So I just need to go into formulas. and I'm going to get my product because I'm multiplying and I'm going to multiply the stage times the width okay and I'm going to do this all the way down but rather than write the formula every single time I'm going to put the cursor in the lower right hand corner and click and drag ta-da it's all done now I'm going to go over and do it for the, my discharge calculation which is my velocity times my area so again I'm going to get my function it's going to be a product, and I'm going to multiply area times velocity. Okay, and I'm going to click and drag. And before I go to plot this, I'm just going to check my decimal places, because I can't have more decimals in my answer than the equipment that I was using. And you'll notice that when I was, or whoever, was measuring flow, the velocity at one point was 0.465 meters per second so we can put our in answers to three decimals so now we want to do a graph so I'm just going to move over to the other side of the page and I'm going to go to insert a chart and I'm going to select a scatter chart and from the selection that I'm given I'm going to get one that shows me the individual points and connects them on a line and now I want to put in my information. So I'm going to go to design. Uh, it's already here. And data. Sorry, select data. Add. Uh, I'm going to give it a name. So we'll say ratings curve demonstration. My x is going to be the discharge, so I'm going to highlight the numbers in my discharge column. And my y, notice that there's this, excuse me, equals 1 given as a default. Get rid of it because it just messes everything up. So our vertical axis, we want our stage, so I'm going to highlight the numbers over there. Okay, and everything's all right. And there's my curve. Now I'm just going to clean it up a bit. I am going to go to layout and I'm going to add my axes and name them. So my horizontal is going to be my discharge in cubic meters per second. And on the vertical, I'm going to put my stage and I'm going to make it horizontal. so I don't have to tilt my head when I read it. There. Now, it was asking us to determine the discharge when the stage is 0.6 meters. It's kind of hard right now because there's not many lines. So I'm going to right click on the numbers on the horizontal axis and I can click on add major grid lines. Right click again, add minor grid lines. And I can do the same thing on the vertical side. Oh, that's already there. And I'm just going to uh, increase the size of my graph so I can read it better. And it's asking me, again, like I said, discharge at 0.6. So I'm going to take the line, project it to where it meets the line of best fit, and bring it down. And it looks to be about 0.38 cubic meters per second. Uh, you could draw a line connecting and another line bringing it down, but there's nothing uh, in Excel right now that we can uh, put a 
click on the point and it tell us. Unfortunately, it will just tell us the coordinates of the points that were plotted. So that is how you determine discharge at a particular stage.